Russia and Turkey agree to create a demilitarized zone in Syria's northwestern province of Idlib. During a meeting, we took a close look at the situation and decided to create a demilitarized zone along the contact line of Syrian government forces and armed opposition 15 to 20 kilometers deep by the 15th of October of the current year. Radically minded rebels to be pulled out of this zone, including Nusra Front. Russian President made the comments at a joint press conference with his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Sochi. Vladimir Putin said heavy weapons must be withdrawn from the demilitarized zone by October 10th. Erdogan, for his part, said Turkey and Russia will carry out coordinated patrols in the demilitarized zone. This comes as the Syrian army is preparing to launch an all-out offensive to recapture Idlib, that is the last terrorist stronghold in Syria. The terrorists, including al-Qaeda franchise Nusra Front, have been in control of the province since early 2015. For weeks, Idlib has been bracing itself for the assault that seemed imminent. Damascus and Moscow both signaled it was coming, that they wanted to clear out Syria's final rebel stronghold. And after a lull, bombs had started falling again. But following a marathon meeting in Sochi, it looks like Turkey's president has persuaded Vladimir Putin to try something different. For a while at least, the assault is off. During the meeting, we took a close look at the situation and decided to create a demilitarized zone along the contact line of Syrian government forces and the armed opposition, 15 to 20 kilometers deep, by the 15th of October of the current year. It's a success for Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who has mounted an urgent diplomatic campaign to avert what the United Nations said would be a major humanitarian disaster. Together we will ensure the detection and the prevention of provocation of third parties and violations of the agreement. With this aim, Russia and Turkey will carry out coordinated patrols on the borders of both sides of the demilitarized zone that will be designated. All heavy weapons will have to be withdrawn from the buffer zone and what Putin called radically minded rebels, including Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, would have to pull out. The details are to be agreed with Damascus, according to Russia's defence minister. Yet again it's been made clear that despite all the talk of Syria's territorial integrity, its sovereignty, that it's Syrians themselves that should be deciding the fate of their country, ultimately it's outside powers that are calling the shots. But those outside powers have their limitations too. Russia can't ignore Turkey and Monday's developments show that. Things Russia needs to call its Syrian intervention a success, the return of refugees, reconstruction, the political process, would be all but impossible without Ankara's involvement. Turkey, terrified of a new wave of homeless Syrians, put its foot down. Moscow listened and Idlib gets a reprieve for now. We're joined by Brian Becker, National Director of the Answer Coalition. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Brian, what are the challenges with the implementation of the partial demilitarization of the Idlib province? Well, since, uh, since this war began in 2011, it's never been simply a war between the Syrian government and armed gangs that the Syrian government characterizes as armed terrorist organization. There's always been an international factor. In fact, perhaps the dominant factor, the dominant characteristic of the Syrian war is the fact that there are so many international players. Initially, Turkey, along with the United States and Saudi Arabia and Qatar, were supporting armed insurgent terrorist organizations that were trying to overthrow the Assad government. The Russian government finally came in, intervened, I'd say decisively changed the relationship of forces. We may now be what would be the end of the war if Idlib was liberated, but it's a city of three million people. Turkey, for its own reasons, doesn't want uh, this offensive to take place. It hit, it's still supporting armed groups inside of Idlib. Russia is, uh, is afraid that the United States is looking for a pretext to intervene. Uh, so we have international players. Idlib is a complicated story. This may be a peaceful way or a semi-peaceful way to end this conflict. Well, peace is always good, but the agreement between Russia and Turkey is expected to be discussed with the Syrian government in the upcoming days. Uh, can the implementation of uh, the zone really avert a new stage on the Syrian crisis? Uh, I threw out my crystal ball on election night 2016, so I don't really know with certainty. But I would say this, 
uh, any battle to retake Idlib, which the Syrian government certainly has the legal right. It's part of Syrian territory. Syrian government is the only country that is the sovereign in Syria. They have the right to do it, but it's going to be a very complicated, bloody battle because there are three million people. There are tens of thousands of uh, terrorist fighters, including uh, al-Qaeda or al-Nusra front fighters. Uh, and at the same time, Turkey is supporting armed militias inside the city. Then you have the Turkish-Kurd conflict. Uh, it's very, very complicated. If there was a way to avert a military retaking of Idlib, if, in other words, this de-escalation zone could lead eventually to the liberation of Idlib from the terrorist hold, that would be a good thing because we'd av avoid such a terrible carnage. Can it happen? I think that remains to be seen. Well, it's interesting. You mentioned you threw it out with 2016. What has been the changes you've seen uh, in the way the different administrations between the Obama administration and the Trump administration has handled the events going on in the Idlib Peninsula? Well, it's a bit of an irony because Donald Trump, while campaigning, said the U.S. should not be part of the uh, Syrian war. He said he wanted to bring U.S. troops back out of Syria. He said we shouldn't be pursuing regime change. Uh, but if you look at what the Trump administration has specifically done on the ground, they've sent more troops to Syria. The U.S. has military bases in Syria. The uh, Trump administration just threatened, and his administration officials just threatened, that should there be any sort of chemical attack, which maybe was, would be used as a pretext, another major U.S. intervention. So if anything, Donald Trump has been more aggressive, more interventionist than even President Obama. Interesting. Well, so just hours after the signing of the agreement we were talking about, the Syrian station SANA reported alleged Israeli airstrikes. We're going to bring another element into this. A number of missiles have been shot down in the area in the Syrian port city of Latakia. Um, the attack allegedly targeted a facility owned by the Syrian military. How can this play out with the current tensions going on in the area? Well, it's not, it's not an allegation. The, the, the Israeli government has struck Syria with aerial attacks, again, in violation of international law, 200 times in the last year. Uh, it's kind of an open secret. This is going on almost every other day on the part of the Israelis. The Israelis are also assisting armed terrorist fighters, including ISIS and al-Qaeda fighters, treating them and also providing military uh, support for them. These are also not now secrets. So the Israeli government, what is its interest? Again, an international player, it wants to keep Syria very weak. It wants to keep Syria very fragmented. If Syria is weak, it can act, uh, give any kind of support as it has done historically to the Palestinian people, who of course the Israeli government wants to push out. They want to push Palestinians out of the West Bank, out of Gaza, and to be able to reclaim what they call greater Israel. So the Israeli government is an aggressor here. It's uh, illegally targeting Syrian troops and other uh, Syrian allied troops inside of Syria. It's playing a destabilizing role in this war. Well, I think the whole area is destabilized at this point, and let's hope we can find some stabilization at least by the end of the year.